In this video, I want to talk about the EGR valve. And this is something that's typical on a lot of these older Mercedes-Benz. And it's not just Mercedes-Benz. EGR valves are used on a lot of cars. I received quite a few emails from customers asking about the valve, what does it do, how do you test it, and so on. This is just an introductory video. It's not going to cover all the systems related to activating the EGR valve. It's only going to cover testing the valve itself and what will happen if it doesn't work properly. So this is the intake and exhaust manifold assembly off a 617 turbo diesel Mercedes Benz. And sitting right here is the EGR valve. Now what does EGR stand for? It stands for exhaust gas recirculation. So what does the EGR valve do? Yes, it recirculates the exhaust gases. And what it does is it allows exhaust gases to come back into the intake manifold and go back through the engine, cleaning up your exhaust. It's very simply put, what it does is it kind of recycles everything back into the engine, reburns it so when it goes out the exhaust tailpipe, you have fewer emissions. So you can look here at this system. Right now you can see this is the exhaust manifold, the turbocharger sits here, the exhaust manifold, and then you have this pipe right here. And the pipe connects to the valve. The valve is actuated by vacuum. And when vacuum is applied to the valve, it opens it up and it allows exhaust gases to go back through the intake manifold and right back into the intake of the engine. Now if the valve is closed, then exhaust gases are all going to go straight out the tailpipe and none are going to go into the intake manifold. Now to test one of these, you will need a little tool and I'll show you that in the next scene. I mentioned earlier that the EGR valve is controlled by vacuum. In other words, when vacuum is applied to this part of the chamber of the EGR, it pulls a diaphragm and opens the valve up. So in order to test this, you're going to need some means to apply vacuum to see if it's working properly. And so enter the vacuum hand pump tester. This is a very handy tool. If you do work on your own cars, this is a absolute must have, particularly on the older Mercedes Benz. So I can apply a little vacuum to this valve. Let's see what happens when I hook the tester up and I pump up vacuum. Look at that. See that? It comes right up in holes. And I can look down in here and I can see the valve opening. So if the EGR valve is bad, what will happen is that maybe the diaphragm is torn, there's a leak in the chamber, you won't have any vacuum. Or in some cases, the valve may be stuck open or closed, and even applying vacuum doesn't necessarily mean that it's working properly. So let's look at some examples of testing this on other cars. This is the location of the EGR valve on the later diesels, the OM602 and 603 engines that were built in the uh, um, mid to late 80s and early 90s. It's located in about the same position as the OM617. It's a little bit different design. But let's put this one to the test and see if it will hold vacuum first. I'll hook up my vacuum hand pump tester. Make sure I have a good tight connection. And now I'm going to start pumping. I'll bring it up to 10 and wait. Uh, no evidence of leak down. Up to 15, 16, no problems. And then right up to 20 and the needle is holding steady. That means the EGR valve is not leaking. Now let's pull the hose off quickly to see if we can hear movement inside the valve. Yep, sure enough we heard a good strong snapping sound. So that means the valve had been open and closed and seated. Here is a typical EGR valve on a gasoline engine. This one is mounted on an early uh, M104 engine and it's on this aft manifold here. It looks, it kind of looks similar to the EGRs that you see on most of the diesels. You can see it's a little bit smaller. Here's the vacuum line coming into it. The testing procedure is the same using a vacuum hand pump. We will connect it up 
and we will see if it will hold vacuum. Look at that, right up to, I'll pump it up to 2022. Now to see whether or not the actual valve inside this EGR is working, here's a little trick I use. You unplug the hose very quickly and you'll hear the valve snap. That means it's closing. If there is no movement or sound inside the valve, it may be seized. So listen carefully. Yep, you could hear the snap of the valve, and of course the gauge drops right off to zero. So I suspect, even without removing this EGR from the manifold, this one is working properly because it is holding vacuum and it is moving internally. This is the EGR valve in an M103 engine in a 190E 2.6. Let's see how this one tests. I will once again remove this vacuum line and we'll hook up the tester. Now let's pump it up and see if this one, will, look at that. See that? This one doesn't even pump up to, to five. So there's a good example of a EGR that has failed. I can almost assure you that it's got a torn diaphragm in here and it's not even opening the valve. Let's take a closer look at the internal operation of an EGR valve. Here, here again is the diaphragm chamber here, and the, the valve is actually almost like a valve in an engine. And it's connected to a rod going into the chamber, and when you apply pressure, it's going to try to open. Now here is a valve that's partially failed. It will pump up, but it leaks down quite rapidly. You can see it leaking down. But if you look closely in here, you can see that valve moving. I pump real fast, and you can see the valve moving in there, trying to open. So this EGR valve is no good. I mean, it needs to be able to open and hold vacuum. If it's not holding vacuum, then, you know, that's a problem. But also, right here, take a look at the amount of soot that you see both here, and this is the area here that goes into the intake manifold, and that's why you see a lot of sooty gunk that builds up on the inside of intake manifolds. It's because the EGR, the exhaust gases, are recircling through here, and they're creating uh, this sludgy compound that you see inside. So the question is now, what happens? What, you, what you, should you do if your EGR valve is not working properly? You can't believe how many emails I received of people asking, Kent, what will happen if I disconnect the EGR valve and how do I do it and on and on. And I generally do not reply because there is a legal issue. In many states, it's illegal to disconnect or to have a malfunctioning EGR valve. So it's very difficult for me to advise you on what you should do, but I am going to mention a couple things that you need to be aware of. If the EGR valve fails, you want to make sure it's stuck closed. <laughs> you want to make sure it is closed while you're driving because if it's open all the time, that's not going to be good for your engine because you're getting way too much exhaust gases recircling through. You're going to get a lot more soot buildup in the intake manifold, your fuel economy is going to go down. So while you're in the process of repairing your own EGR system, you may need to remove it. Remember in those earlier tests, the first two where the valve was working properly, you could hear that snapping sound and you knew that the valve was closed. Well, if you're not hearing a snapping sound, and you suspect that the valve's not moving, then you need to re remove this. You need to actually remove it and make sure that the valve is at least stuck closed. So if you are driving the car while waiting to repair your EGR system, you know that it's closed and not open. So I hope that you find this a little helpful. Uh, remember, about 50% of these that I do test fail.